again into those kinds of uh, dreamscapes, which I'm quite fond of. Landscape. The village is empty. Each has gone home without a sound, except for some children who make a snowman under a street lamp. In this bare room, our silence unfolds around us its own white distances. Your skin like water, disturbed by a stone, reforms where my fingers have pressed. The snowman is there, untouchable in his frame. He has a scarf and face. He almost smells of snow. And this poem really is shaped really like a piece of prose, it's a paragraph, it's a little story really. Insect. Walking by the council houses in the falling snow, I thought I saw someone waving to me from a downstairs window. Yet when I got close enough to press my face against the frosty glass, I realised I'd been mistaken. There was only a family watching television. Looking more closely still, however, I saw myself walking on the screen. The youngest daughter was crying because the way I dragged my crushed leg behind me reminded her of an insect. Best disguise. The ice is broken. Beyond the mirror, the bits and pieces are our own to wrap all over again in these panes of water. At the edge of the river I catch up with you, gathering clues, insisting we recalculate our route before our lives end as a dream about life. It's such a funny shape to hold, yet you wrap your hand around it. When we fall asleep, our bodies are empty. No one knows who we are sinking to the riverbed. On the far shore, the lights of the village are artfully strewn, torn into the fabric of the dark. Strange to me, and yet at the heart of me, I climb into a little vessel and travel. I'll just finish again with just um, a very, very short story, really. The only ones are 